I'm a sole director of Gilling Glass Company Limited, glass and glazing industry. Um, trading since 2005, 15 years. Turn out about 700, 800,000 um, per annum and eight employees. And, you know, over the years, it's gone strength to strength. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so one thing that was you know, quite interesting to me when I was thinking about this is, although I've known you for some years personally, you, you've been running your business initially with a business partner, and then for the last five or six years, you've owned the business outright. In that period of yeah. time, have either you, pre or post taking the business over entirely, worked with an external consultant? No, I haven't. No, no. I haven't even thought about it, actually, until I've, I've started speaking to yourself. Uh, because I felt because the business going strength to strength, I wouldn't need to do that. Um, but after speaking to yourself over the last few, definitely the last few months, you know, about the pension side of it, where I'm going to be in 10 years time, you know, what I want, to, my retirement basically, because like I'm nearly 56 this year. So um, I've probably got another 10 years. And now is the time, I believe, to start thinking about my exit at the end of the day there are a few options. So one, one of the, one of the um, instigators of you and I working together was a, a simple question I asked you one day, which is what sort of planning are you making for either exiting Gillingham Glass or retirement, depending on that, you know, what term you want to use. And I, I think I offered you some feedback on your, your answer, which was, I've got my business, I'm planning to sell it, um, and that's the extent of my, my exit plan. You, that, that. That, yeah, that's my mindset because I've got my business and now I'm the sole trader. I haven't got a business partner. That was my pension, or that I believed is my pension. Um, once I spoke to yourself, you did open my eyes up to no, no, it's not completely my pension. I need to look at something else. Yeah, so my, my, my point at that, that stage was yeah, there can be lots of events that happen that impact on your business positively and negatively that might affect your your long-term financial financial future so rather than solely relying on the the exit your exit and sale of the business but to, to put other plans in place as well and what also happens if like with covid as well you know my business goes goes under you know where's my pension then well that was really that was timely it, not not in a nice way obviously but i no, think but what, what the right. supported was the argument i was making was you, you need to have some personal assets put aside for your future and not rely solely on the, the sale of your business. Yeah. So since that moment, you and I have started talking a little bit about exit planning and what that, what that might look like. And that, when coronavirus is all over, here we are sort of four and a half weeks into lockdown, that's going to be one of, our, one of our larger pieces of work, I think. It is, yes. Look forward to that. So one of the pieces of work we've got to, we, you, we'll have to dig into then is sort of analysing what the sale of your business might look like. Who, who might be an interested purchaser? And that might be, for example, someone inside your business, because I, I know there's yeah. someone there that uh, you work very closely with. That might be a potential supplier or a potential competitor. And so what, what are your thoughts on, uh, thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I haven't even... All I've looked at before speaking to yourself was I will probably sell my business um, in 10 years time, that is my retirement. But there are a few options now, after speaking to yourself, that I thought, oh, okay, perhaps I could do that. Um, number one, like you just said, you know, maybe an employee could, could buy the business and set that up so that happens financially, speak with mm -hmm. him as well. Um, or I could take a bit, um, step back in say five years time and let somebody run my business so I'm still, you know, being profitable from the business myself and taking it a little bit easy and or, or completely sell it in 10 years. You know, there are options there. And I didn't realise those options were all there until I'd spoken to you. It's um, one thing I'm just going to just highlight on that. This is really important for all, particularly um, small business owners where you are the owner and the, the director in the businesses. In order for the, the business to be interesting for someone to, to wish to purchase it from you, the business has to be able to function without you in it. Because yes. the, the purpose of the sale is to be able to step away and in, enjoy a better work-life balance, for example, or enjoy time with family, or whatever your goals are. But if the business doesn't work without you there, whoever is going to wish to buy the business would require you to remain in it. So you don't, you don't achieve your goal. So part of the longer-term planning for, a, for an owner exit from a business is making sure it does operate without them. And that might look like a, a phased 
stepping back over a number of years. It might look like introducing a, a management team that can, can operate the business without you there. Because at the moment, I'm really I'm looking forward to it. I haven't got that in place at the moment because I'm the only one that does all the financial side of it. So I've again got to start looking at that side of it. Well, I'm really looking forward to the next few years. Let's get, get out of get out of coronavirus, get out of this crisis, and uh, looking forward to getting work on uh, getting to work on the project. Feelings mutual. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Ash. Thank you. Bye bye.